as you can see here, uh, we have different column names. We have different rows here, and we need to go and parse this CSV file to split first the rows and put each of them into one record or into one element of the array. And the next step, we are going to split the columns for each item. Well, um, there are many different alternatives to do that into the Power Automate, but some of them are not free and you may need to buy some extra connectors and you may need to pay for the connection. Therefore, I created this tutorial to do it with built-in actions that we have access into Microsoft Power Automate. So first you need to copy your data into the OneDrive because we are going to access from OneDrive into the Power Automate. The first step is open the file and read the content of that file, which is like this. So on the first step, you just get file content, add an action, you add get file content. OneDrive for business, you select this one, then you select your file by clicking here, going to the root or whatever the folder name is, and then select the file. And the next step, we are going to put each of those rows in one element of an array. So we just initialize a variable. So we just add an action, initialize a variable like this, and we select the array as a type. You can select the object as well, but it's maybe a little bit harder to work with for now. So select select a name, choose a name for it, and here is the trick. When you want to split a text based on the line, you usually use a regex operation and write down backslash r, backslash n, and split by this. It really doesn't work in this way in the flow. Even if you write double backslash, it doesn't recognize it and it doesn't split it. So for solving this problem, we have created this script. So let's see what is this script. So here we are doing the split and here is the split formula. Well, so first we get the body, the file content from the body, which is here. It means I'm getting it from the body of the flow. And at the first step, I'm going to convert it to the URI component by using this syntax. After we do that, we are going to replace all backslash R's with a null string. Actually, when you convert the uh, convert your string to URI, all backslash R's convert to something like this, percentage zero D. So here, first we go and find all percentage zero D's and replace it with a null string. At the second step, we are going to replace this backslash n, which is a new line, with something more understandable for us. So on the second step, I am going to replace this percentage 0a with a marker named new line hashtag, new line hashtag. So after we've done this, we really don't want to see the strange formatted URI string. We want to see it as a normal text, like you're seeing it here. So we convert it back and decode it to the string. After we decode it to the string, if we go in the middle of the flow and open the result of the operation, we can see, yes, it creates this hashtag, new line hashtag in the beginning of each line. So it's understandable for us that this marker means we have gone to the next row or we have gone to the next item in our array. After that, based on this hashtag new line hashtag marker, we split this. So simple. So let's go see what we have done here so far. It splits this string and puts each one, each row into the array. After we are done the splitting the rows, it's time to split the columns for each one. So we have to create a query. There are many different ways to do that, but uh, the simplest one is to do a select query. We want to map the first column to the summary, second column to issue key, and so on. For this example, we use the summary issue key and create it, which is the 17th column. So this is the, the index of this column is zero. 
one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So here we are saying that the first splitted um, item is summary. Second one is issue key. Here I want to note some hints about splitting. If you open the CSV file, you can see each column is separated by a comma. Here is the trick. If you have some commas into your text, do not use a comma as a separator. Use a semicolon or I don't know, whatever you can create. You can create something like hashtag new line hashtag, which is unique uh, and it doesn't exist anywhere in our data. So just use a proper separator, understandable for you, understandable for the system and do not mix with the data. So here uh, we just have um, normal text without any commas. So we use the comma separator and here we are going to say what to parse and how to select. So the first one is actually using this array, but it skips the first row. So we just wrote instead of writing variable CSV array that we are going to choose and do the select operation based on this array, we skipped the first row because the first row contains header and it's useless for us. We don't want to use that. It's not any, it doesn't have any use for us. So we just skip the first row and we select the rest of the items based on the index place in, our, in that array. So we are splitting this item, it means this item, based on the comma and we keep and we extract and the first one, which the index number is zero. So it goes to each and every row in that array, each and every element in that array and select the first one. The zero number means the first one. Okay. And uh, it puts it, it, it marks it as a summary of that item, of that array item. The second one, as you can see, number is one, but it's the second one is the issue key and the 17th one, I'd like to open it. Yeah. The 17th one is the created date. So let's go. After we do the selection, we need to loop into that selection operation. So we choose the output of that select. And based on each one, we create a task. Right now, we have created a test plan one group, as you can see here. I hope you can see here, uh, I need to refresh, I guess, to show you. Well, so here is a simple scenario. You can, if you have giant number of tasks and different groups and different uh, plans and different buckets, of course, you need to do more complex operation here, especially when you want to uh, do the date, date and time uh, operation, you need to do more scripting. So here uh, is actually it doesn't load, but it, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's the group ID is the test plan one group and the plan ID is test plan one, as we can see here. So you, you can do many other operations to do it. After that, we are just going to set the title to the summary. So we are just updating the first column. OK, and here is the script. Uh, it doesn't open, but it's OK. It goes to each item of the loop one, as you can see, the name of the loop is loop one, and it goes to each item and opens the summary uh, column. If you had a JSON file, it would be much easier to do, but uh, yeah, the CSV is somehow converted to uh, like a JSON file. So we use this one to update. Let's save it and let's run the flow and see what happens here. We just test. Uh, the first time it may need some consents to um, open the planner on behalf of you and so on. So we just accept it. As you can see, the select operation was successful and the flow runs successfully. Wow, great. It's uh, found eight records, which is correct. And for each of them, as you can see, it found test some one, two, and so on. Let's go to the planner and refresh this one and see. Yeah, we have the tasks here. So here was the trick to parse the CSV file. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Uh, just follow us and if you have any other questions, please write an email to me and I will try to answer it as soon as possible. Thank you and have a very good time.